This is five on your side at four, focused on you. We begin with breaking news as we go on the air at four. St. Louis police investigating a shooting involving an officer. I'm Kay Quinn. And I'm Brent Solomon. Now this happened about two hours ago in the city's Fairground Parks neighborhood. That's where we find five on your side's Robert Townsend. Robert, what's happening there? Hey there, Brent and Kay. For the past two hours, multiple St. Louis police officers, detectives, and supervisors have been out here in this North St. Louis neighborhood. As I step back, you can see they are back there in the 4200 block of Linton Avenue, still investigating the shooting that involved several St. Louis police officers. Right now, investigators still aren't talking to us at this point. Now, a source tells Five Year Side just after 2 o'clock this afternoon, a man got out of a car with a gun, turned around, and pointed it at an officer. Officers then shot the suspect. Suspect. Now, police say the suspect was conscious and breathing when paramedics rushed him to a hospital. The car the suspect was in is apparently still in an alley. Police just brought in a second K-9 unit. Now, family members of the suspect are also here at this scene. Minutes ago, they talked to me and told me that the man is 21 years old. They say he lives just down the street from here on Linton Avenue. They also say at the time of the shooting, the suspect's one-year-old daughter and two-year-old son were in the car with him. The relatives say the children were not hurt and are now with them. Police Chief Robert Tracy was also here at this tenuous scene. He left about 40 minutes ago. Again, at this point, we're still waiting for police to give us an, an official update on the shooting that involved their officers. We also know this, that no officers were hurt during this shooting that involved several St. Louis police officers. And as I look over to my right, we're getting ready to talk to one of the uh, police sergeants. We'll have much more coming up at five. Live now in North City, I'm Robert Townsend. Five on your side. All right, thank you, Robert. Stay with Five on your side. For any updates on this breaking story, you can find them on air on KSDK.com and on the Five on your side app. Right now at four, parents are reacting to the abrupt closure of a North St. Louis charter school just days before the start of the school year. The Hawthorne Leadership School for Girls closed due to low enrollment. Five on your side's Diamond Palmer is live Live outside the school, Diamond, what are parents saying about the closure? Good evening, Kay and Brent. Well, parents are saying that they feel like they have to rush to find another school for their children to attend. And this actually comes actually before the opening of St. Louis Public Schools are slated to begin. Now, the St. Louis All Girls Charter School opened in 2015 and includes grades 6 through 12 with a focus on STEM. About 120 students were enrolled last school year, according to the National Center for Education. I spoke to parents today who say they weren't involved in the decision to close the school. And they also added they were given a list of school options from Hawthorne and have to call for openings, then send over transcripts and recommendation letters for the new schools. I'm really hoping that the board did not make this decision and just based on being in a boardroom. Um, did they actually come in and mingle and uh, speak to the students and uh, have an informational session for parents. Uh, maybe I could have said, hey, I have three students that may be interested in attending Hawthorne. We weren't involved in that process and we definitely, we were not involved in the decision. Now, the Hawthorne Leadership Foundation did release a statement, and this says in part, a variety of factors contributed to our drop off in enrollment, a drop experienced by Hawthorne and countless other schools in our region, shifting demographics in the city of St. Louis, overall population decline, the ongoing effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on student enrollment and attendance. Now, Washington University, a sponsor of this charter school, says they fully support this decision for the closure and understands that it was a difficult decision. Reporting in North St. Louis, Diamond Palmer, five on your side. All right, thank you, Diamond. Now to a major shakeup in the city of Jennings. Several city employees have walked off the job. In his resignation letter, city attorney Sam Alton called the actions of Mayor Gary Johnson, quote, illegal, unethical, immoral, and racist. City clerk Deletra Hudson also called the office a hostile work environment. Mayor Johnson says he will not comment on the allegations. Five on your side's Mercedes McKay will have a full report on the sudden resignations tonight 
on five and your side at five and six. We have some new information right now on Tuesday's deadly double shooting in Midtown. Police sources telling five on your side it started as a drug deal. They say Jalen French was inside of a car selling marijuana to another man. They say that's when the man tried to rob French and shot him. French got out of the car and the shooter got into the driver's seat. French's girlfriend was in the back seat. She got into a fight with the shooter, took his gun and shot him. French died on scene. The suspect was taken to the hospital. To address violent crime in North St. Louis, District 6 has started a new crime intervention task force. The group of officers dedicate extra hours in an effort to get immediate results. On their first day on the task force yesterday, officers arrested a previously convicted felon who had a gun. Police say the task force will focus on areas known for violence and also address community concerns. When we as captains get information from citizens and requests like there's direct activity on our block, we're seeing a lot of people with weapons on our block. You know, we can't drive down our block and we can't get through because people are out in the street. So when we receive that information and what uh, the district captain is doing, he's giving that information to these specific officers to go out on these patrols and be able to tackle that. The task force is not unique to District 6. Police say other districts have similar efforts to address violent crime. An update on water contamination in St. Charles. The Elm Point water treatment plant is now operating again. Earlier this week, the city had to shut it down due to a drop in ammonia levels. Well, yesterday, crews installed and tested a temporary chemical feed pump and dosing system. Last night, the Missouri Department of Natural Resources gave the city approval to resume drinking water. Well, as former President Trump prepares to turn himself into Georgia authorities, President Biden is working to draw attention to his own accomplishments. Today, the president celebrated his efforts to lower costs and create jobs. NBC's Bree Jackson reports from the White House. President Biden touting his successes highlighting the Inflation Reduction Act he signed into law one year ago and its historic investments in clean energy and climate. Together, we can make this transition to a clean energy future fair and just. And that means ensuring that auto jobs continue to be good jobs. Issues like the economy remain top of mind for many, including voters who the president needs to win the 2024 election. Despite his administration's efforts to create jobs and tackle inflation, Polls show the president remains neck and neck in a potential rematch with former President Trump, whose legal battles remain front and center. I'm paying attention to the independent numbers, as well as those swing voters who are tired of the indictments and the conversations around Donald Trump and they want to move on. Mr. Trump's latest indictment includes charges related to alleged efforts to overturn Georgia's 2020 election results. Former Vice President Mike Pence weighing in on his former running mate's fourth indictment for the first time. The Georgia election was not stolen and I had no right to overturn the election on January 6th. Judge Scott McAfee will oversee the Georgia case against Trump and 18 other co-defendants, including former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani. This is a ridiculous application the racketeering statute. Former President Trump insists he's innocent and claims he has evidence to prove it. He says he'll reveal that at a news conference Monday. In Washington, Bree Jackson, NBC News. Much more still ahead. Thousands of people still without power in Maui following last week's wildfires. And now a new storm is brewing. It captures a specific point in my life that was probably the most challenging thing that I've gone through so far. Rebuilding after a mental health crisis, a young woman shares her story of bipolar disorder. Comfortable conditions across the area this afternoon. The sun is out. Great evening for baseball, the Muni. What about the upcoming weekend? We're tracking that next.